All right, next up is talking about load paths. And what I mean by a load path is um, how the, there we go. How loads move from being a from be where they're applied to the ground, right? If I'm on the third floor, how does the fact my weight that I'm on the third floor move through a building to get down to the ground, right? From the slab to the columns and all that. So first, I'm going to do talk about um, a beam, right? What types of forces are in a beam and or the columns and what types of reactions? So I have a beam with a distributed load that's going to cause bending or moment. Let me write moment, right? Bending moment that's an m and shear those are the forces the reactions that i'm gonna have shear is denoted by a v um the reactions i'm gonna have are gonna be equal and opposite in the vertical direction or not equal and opposite but um on scale with the applied load we're not adding any, we're not applying any numbers right now. I'm not even doing any math. Um, but right, I'm going to have vertical reactions. So now if I put, right, those are my vertical reactions. If I apply a load to a planar frame where I have a beam on top of two, um, on top of two columns, right? I have moment and shear in my beam and they apply a vertical load down my columns, which in turn um, cause a vertical opposite um, reaction in the opposite direction at the ground, right? What type of load is in my columns? It's going along the axis, so it's axial load. So I have a beam that has some moment and shear in it, and that causes axial load in my columns. Uh, if I look at a one-way slab, um, which we'll talk about in the next topic, um, I have a one-way slab that is supported by three beams. One, two, three beams. Right? One, two, three beams. And those beams, right? These are my beams. And those beams, in turn, are supported by girders. Girders are big beams that support smaller beams. So I have my girders. So how, if I apply a... Um, if I apply a pressure load to my slab, I'm going to use tributary areas to distribute that pressure load to the beams. All right? There are my beams.
And in turn, so I have distributed load along those individual beads. And that causes reactions that are going to end up being concentrated forces on the girders. So my, my um, distributed load flows through the slab to the beams to cause distributed loads on the beams. And again, what do I have? I have shear and moment in those beams. Whereas before my beams were resting right on columns, now I'm resting on a girder. So now this is just what I did before on the left. I distributed my load from the slab to the beams. And it's going to result in, right, the slab to the beams. It's going to result in those reactions, right? This reaction in the beam is causing a concentrated force on my girder. So I have three concentrated forces on the girders from each beam. Well, one from each beam. <laughs> so three total. If I treat those girders like they're simply supported beams on those columns, my girders are going to have shear and moment in them, and then they're going to have reactions on their ends. Right? So my slab goes to my beams, the beams go to the girders. Now what's holding up my girders? Sounds like what's holding up my girdle. Not much. No. Um, what's holding up my, my girders are my columns. Right? These are the reactions from the beams to the girders. Now I have reactions that are going to go down my columns. Right? And what kind of loading is on my column? It's an axial load. Right? My beams and my girders were holding, having shear and moment, but that causes axial load in my columns, which then goes down to the actual ground. Right, and there's my reaction from the ground. If I have a two-way slab, um, we're going to talk about this in the next one with numbers, but if I have a two-way slab, um, my tributary area looks a little bit different. It's going to be triangular or trapezoidal. Instead of doing half and half rectangularly, now it's divided at a 45-degree angle. causing a distributed load, right? This is a slab with uh, monolithically poured with four edge beams. So these, this is what it's going to look like taking my pressure load to a triangular distributed load on my edge beams. And again, I'm going to have shear and moment in all of these edge beams. I 
again, going to start looking at it now. I've got these edge beams and they're going to have reactions. And I'm drawing it because I'm looking at it in plan. Um, they're like looking like horizontal, but really, right, they become vertical reactions onto um, the columns, right? Here's a reaction, reaction, and those get added together because they're at the same, right, they're at the same corner. <laughs> And they get added together, and you have your ground reaction. And again, I have axial load in those columns. Um, if I'm looking at a multi-story building, let's start with the first story. I have a distributed load on the first floor, which causes an axial load down the columns to the ground, causing a reaction at the ground. I add another story. Well, now I'm adding more load. It's gonna go down the second story columns and get added to the first story columns. So my reaction going to get a little bigger at the ground. If I add a third story, now the third story load is being distributed from the slabs to the third story columns, which get added to the second story columns, and then get added to the third story column, or the first floor column, sorry, going, going down. And my ground reaction gets a little bit bigger, <laughs> right? These are all kind of added together with a principle called superposition that we're gonna talk about um, in a little bit. So that was my gravity loads. That's how my gravity loads go from where I'm standing, distributed from the floor to the supporting beams or girders, and then to the supporting columns. So my beams and my girders and my are, are bending. They're in bending. They're holding up. Um, they're subjected to shear and moment. My axial load is in my columns and my beams and girders and columns are what generally support the gravity loads. Gravity loads would be your dead load and your live load um, or your roof load. Um, right, Anything that's going up and down and gravity is causing it to weigh what it weighs. <laughs> Now let's look at lateral loads, right? That was, we were talking about like our wind loads, um, our seismic loads. Those are generally our lateral loads because they're acting horizontally. First, let's look at a vertical cantilever. It has if I apply a lateral load to a fixed cantilever, right, it's gonna deflect like that. And what kind of reactions would that cause? It would cause a horizontal reaction and a moment, right? Meaning I have shear and moment in my vertical cantilever. So just like a horizontal cantilever, you just turned it on its side. So 
So let's take my vertical cantilever single beam and make it into a frame with uh, two columns and a beam. And if it has fixed um, ground connection down at the bottom, what would it look like if I applied a load? It would deflect right like that, depending on what those connections are. It kind of look like that. Um, but the problem is, these would be really, really high moments. at your fixed column base. High moments mean you have really um, columns you would be too big. And so it costs way too much money, take up way too much space. Your architect might not be too happy about that. Um, and really we want to keep columns axially loaded. We don't want to have a moment in our column, really, because then you have axial load from your gravity loads and a moment from your um, lateral load. So now you're causing extra stress, right? You're adding stress from your moment and stress from your axial load. So your beams are gonna, your columns are gonna be way too, um, are gonna fail or else you gotta beef them up way too much. So instead, let's look at if we pinned this base. All right. Let's look at if we pinned the base of the column. Well, it would probably be a little bit better, right? It would deflect, it would act like a little hinge, something like that. Um, but it might be unstable. depending on what the connections are between the beams and the columns. So what would I have to do to make it stable? If I wanted to have a pinned base, what would I have to do to um, my frame, to those connections? Well, there's two different schools of thought. Well, there's a third one, but I'm, I'm not showing it here. But if we're talking about like a steel frame, there's two different basic methods. Um, and this would be called a lateral load resisting system. It's what structural system are we putting in there to resist our lateral loads? The first one is called a moment frame. And it's where I make this connection up here a moment. A moment connection. Um, moment frames are expensive. You gotta beef stuff up up there and you don't see them hardly ever because of that. Um, yeah. So our next choice is, um, oh yeah, see, sorry. <laughs> if I apply my load, I have an unstable and I have a pinned connection um, I, um, 
I apply my load and I have a pin connection right there, then it's unstable, so I have to do something. And I apply a moment frame or a moment connection. Um, my alternative would be a braced frame. Oh look, I have the written stuff. The next thing would be a braced frame, which is where I have diagonal members. Right? If I apply a lateral load to the right, I'm going to have one of these braces in tension and one of them in compression. Think about it for a minute. Which one do you think? Kind of got a little hint. Right? This one, the blue one, is in compression. It's your compression brace. And this is your tension brace. And uh, that's going to be resisting your lateral load. So if you go and look at a steel building, a steel frame building, the braces are there for the lateral system. The diagonal members are for the lateral system. The columns, beams, they're there for the gravity loads I and mean, they all work together but that's the purpose of the individual components beams have shear and moment columns have an axial load and then the braces have axial all right And an axial load in the compression brace. Axial compression. So that's a lot, the two different lateral load resisting systems. Now I'm going to show what that would look like in an actual building. I'm going to stick to brace frames, right? Let's say we have a multi story building that is subjected to a pressure load. Over this whole wall. Pressure load would be in PSF pounds per square foot. Um, I'm going to distribute it like a one-way slab, right? I'm going to break that wall. And I'm going to distribute it to um, each floor and the roof. Now, right, if I multiply that by a width, multiply that by a width, by the tributary area, my PSF becomes a distributed load um, pounds per foot, right? This is what it looks like um, in elevation. I distributed it to Um, each floor or roof, which are called a diaphragm, this roof, right, acts like a diaphragm. And 
then, well, it is a diaphragm. And then I treat it, each diaphragm, like, um, like a beam uh, with a distributed load. And then, then I have, right, this is my, these are my supports right here. And they distribute, um, right, my diaphragm. Um, distributes the loads to the lateral resisting system. Such as braces in this case. So my reaction would be the force in the compression brace plus the force in the tension brace, right? Force in compression brace plus my force in my tension brace. And similarly on the other side, my force in my tension brace and my force and my compression brace. And you do that for each diaphragm at each level, right? Which is the first, this is actually the second floor um, slab, third floor slab, and then the roof. The roof might not be able to take it. So you take the load that would be applied to the roof and you apply it to the floor below it. Um, the half of the beam, or the half of the load that's distributed at the bottom of the wall um, it just goes right into the ground. But that's how you take a lateral pressure load over a wall and you distribute it to the re resisting system such as the braces or the moment frame and then generally the other the third lateral resisting system is shear walls which is what it sounds like it's a wall. <laughs> it's usually made out of concrete in shear. Um, so that's kind of, I just wanted to give you a little visualization about how loads get distributed um, in a um, framed building, right? The gravity loads go from the slab to the beams, to the columns, to the ground. The lateral loads go from the walls to the floor diaphragms to the braces or the moment frames. Um, and that's how you kind of start to visualize um, how loads might um, work their way through a system. So thanks.